I'd like to apologize for the poor quality of the video at the very beginning. It does get better. Oil is pissing out. Certain noise and the uh, glass is also flowing from the boys are well better this weekend. Motor mind. Hey folks, Motor Mind here. So today we're going to be working on this 1994 Mitsubishi Delica L400. It's got the, the big 2.8 2 liter uh, turbo diesel in it. The 4M40. It's the same engine that's used in the Shoguns. And uh, I think the Tritons also used it. And um... And a few others back in the 90s, early 2000s. So uh, on this one here, the rear main seal is actually gone. It's been kind of leaking for a while. And one day it up and just decided to completely just let go and dumped oil. So I see the limp at home. Um, luckily it's only just around the corner at the petrol station. Getting diesel. And uh, yeah, so I was able to top it up and get her home. So we're going to have to drop the gearbox. Transmission's coming out. I take the flywheel off and then the rear main seal can come out at the back. Luckily, it's not held in by the uh, main bearings. And um, and we can then install the new one. So, this is one of those. The part's cheap, but the labor, labor would be expensive. And But we're going to try to do it here. So, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to we're going to be modifying my floor jack. And I'm going to put in a, a tra the adapter to hold the gearbox because it's quite a large gearbox on this and on the back obviously not doing it on the lift so uh, stay tuned for that and don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the like, bu like button if you like to see what you see and I'll watch some more videos hey folks here so I just working on the 1994 Mitsubishi Delica L400 uh, this is a long wheelbase four wheel drive uh, super exceed so it's pretty much top of the spec this, the Royal was one more one more above it, but um, so this is uh, we're doing the rear main seal on this. So I pull the gearbox out of it. So uh, I'll show you how to do that, and uh, we'll go along for the journey. Um, obviously, this is um, on the back by myself here. Um, I do have a, an adapter for my jack, which I'm actually in the currently I've uh, I'm modified. I'm currently modifying right now, and uh, I have a separate video to show how I've modified that to make that work. For my Sealy Jack. But um, we'll get going on this, so uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe and click that like button if you enjoyed this video. Alright, so here we are, working on the Mitsubishi Delica. i pull this uh, gearbox out of it, get the rear main seal. I've already, as you see, I've already got it jacked up. I'm on jack stands underneath. There. I've got jack stands in the back. Unlike some people, <coughs> Scotty Kilmer, uh, who don't like to use jack stands and just rely on just hydraulic jack, I prefer to do things properly and make sure it's done safely. I've also uh, shook it and made sure that the vehicle is in steady ground and that it's actually secure and safe to work on. Okay, so we'll go underneath here. So the first thing we're going to have to do here is to remove the drive shafts. So I've got the front drive shaft on here, and there, and then there's bolts there. And bolts on the uh, on the transfer case. So probably what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to take those bolts off the transfer case there, and hopefully we we'll se separate that uh, drive shaft or leave it attached to the um, front differential, unless I need to take that out. Just looking at that, I might actually just take the whole drive shaft right off, just to allow for more access, easier to get the uh, the gearbox out. I also have to do the rear gate drive shaft, as you see here. There's a rear go back there. There's no bolts here. This slides in to yoke. So you want to have there's uh, four bolts in the back. Take them out, and then this unit slides out. It, sits, it couples in there, has a seal. It slides out of the uh, transfer case. <coughs> right. So we're uh, cracking here. We also before we uh, 
get too deep into it, we also need to unhook the linkage uh, at the top there for the um, adjust, for the lever for the transfer case for the four wheel drive select. Uh, as well as we have some electronics you can see on there. Sorry, that's my uh, my dog trying to get out of the back garden. And the, the sensor there uh, for the uh, uh, here uh, the transfer case. As well as we have a couple more sensors on the other side here. I'll show you here in a second. So we have the uh, the lines here for the uh, for the cooler lines. Uh, see another shot there. So the cooler lines here and there. We gotta take those off. Once the front cooler, as well as I have a uh, a plug there, a sensor there, a sensor in the front there. It has to come off. And so I've got a ground strap or something there. Ground wire has come off. So it's had to go through it. So it's just kind of um working out of here. So I looked at the top. It looks like the um the, the selector for the uh, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, for the transfer case. Um, I tried to get it from the top, but <laughs> couldn't see it coming out of the boot. So let's go try it underneath here, and uh, we'll see. Uh, once you get this done, probably on this van, um, <laughs> just in previous videos, I have a Land Rover now, free lender running right now. I'll probably, uh, I'll probably sell this, um, and we'll, uh, and we'll keep the, uh, the Land Rover for now. And then I'll probably upgrade that eventually, but I just found this is maybe just a little bit too big for us at this moment, uh, for what we need. Um, it's a shame because actually I like the vehicle, I like the van. It's got character. It's old, I know it's old and a bit beat up and rusty, but um, it's actually quite a nice vehicle to drive. Actually quite comfortable even on long distances. So. But, uh, yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is try to get that unhooked. Then I'm going to look at try to get the uh, lever unhooked and then we'll go through and get the electricals unhooked. Uh, drive shafts taken off the wires, the lines, everything, and also you need to take the inspection cover off on the front. Um, it'll be on the other side of that the bell housing, and we, we have to undo the bolts that go into the flywheel to the to the torque converter. So make sure to do that, or else uh, if you don't do that, and you try to pull the gearbox out, the torque converter is still attached. Um, it's just you know, making a massive mess. You should you know, dump a bunch of fluid everywhere. And it causes lots of issues. You have to try to get all the you know, fluid back into the transfer case, uh, uh, torque converter, as well as this job. I'm taking the flywheel off, so I still have to take that off anyways. So we'll leave that with the uh, with the transmission. That way, it keeps all the fluid and everything kind of stays um, all together. So uh, as you can see, it's quite wet. It dumped out on me. I was just around the corner. I had to get some fuel. And I limped it back home and parked it up and haven't moved it since. So we're sitting here for a few months uh, waiting for me to get to this. I've been quite busy so I haven't been able to get to it. So, But we are now. Well, I'll have a go. This might be uh, a few days getting this done. I think it's like sitting this on my back on the drive when I have time. So Project Delica, here we go. So uh, let's look and see how to get this out. Yeah. Hey folks, so I found where the, uh, I got this out the top here with the uh, selector for the four wheel drive. There is uh, about six bolts. So I just need to carpet, pull the carpet back to bracket here. This sits underneath that. The gasket sits underneath that. And um, take all that out and pull all this up. And then you can get to the top of the, uh, see there. You get to the top of the um, gearbox, or the tr transfer case actually, and you can uh, remove these, this uh, selector shaft. So you pull the gearbox out, it'll come straight out, and you can now uh, take that out, and then I can leave, I'll put something in there to, uh, to 
is stopping anything from falling inside the ion transfer case. And hopefully yeah, it'll keep all the fluid and stuff in there. So that looks like there's four bolts, three or four bolts. Set them on top here. Because this is a mechanical selector as opposed to a lot of vehicles now are using an electronic. Let's just plug it and plug it into. So it looks like it's three or four bolts on top there. Oh, sorry. In there, so I'll put that there. Okay, just F FYI, taking when you're taking this off, you get into there. You'll see the three bolts on top, and you'll see this four sitting behind them. Take the four off, don't take these guys off. Because these guys here are actually held in with just uh it's just a bolt on the inside. So if you try to take it off. If you do get it off, it'll fall in down in not gonna look very very far like but that's that doesn't seem those aren't what you want to take off there's also a gasket on here try to preserve that again and let's see if i can take it off here just nice and gentle if not i'll uh, use some silicone but, uh, let's see if i can preserve this gasket just stuck on one side here. Sometimes you can preserve these. Which is... Yeah, I'll do. Alright, so I'll uh, tighten them down. I thought it was just those and the thing would pop off, but it's uh, it wasn't. So, just um. Just a little tip, FYI. Okay, so I got the uh, front drive shaft off. So um, as you can see here, four bolts attached. I've, um, I've marked up where the um, where it orients back up, put it back on. No, I've decided it's actually and just thinking about it. Is I'm just going to take off just the um, just a flange to the front differential because I'm going to leave the. Uh, Differential, oh, sorry, the transfer case attached to the gearbox. I'm gonna try to take out all one unit, so separating the uh, transfer case. So, um, if I have to, I will, but I'm gonna try not to because I like to try to keep it all together because there's extra seals in there. And I prefer not to disturb the, uh, the transmission output seal that goes into the uh, transfer case because if I do that and it starts leaking and creating a leak. So, I'm gonna try to do it all, try to just take it all out as one unit. I was gonna put the uh, the tranny jack kind of in that area there. Um, it's a solid pan. It's not a tin pan on this, so it should be fine. And then um, I'm gonna lower it all down together so I can go in and out as one unit. So I uh, wish me luck on that one. So seeing that, I do the rear drive shaft now. That will all have to come out as one unit, but it's not a big deal. Uh, I've actually had that out before, so. Um, it's actually quite easy, so we'll get we'll get that on now. All right, folks. So um, get to the torque converter bolt. See, so get the rear drive shaft off now. Um, you gotta take the belly pan off here. The uh, skid plate. This is a two-piece skid plate. This is one piece that sits in here, and there's another piece that uh, attaches. And it sits under here. So I've took both of them off. I've left this guy on here for now. And I'm gonna have to I may have to get up to the hmm, I may have to get to the uh, crankshaft pulley and uh use that to turn it over so that I can get to the torque converter bolts. Uh yeah. So that should be fun. But yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that so the torque converter bolts to get to them are up in here. You'll see there's a uh, couple 10 mils. I'll uh, stick, see if we stick the lights on the camera here. Stick it up in there, you can see what I'm talking about. That's your inspection cover for your torque converter bolts. So you can see there's a couple 10 mils on there. Take them off, and then you should be able to see the bolts on the side. And then you want to undo those. and 
it obviously goes to the flywheel. So that's um let's see when I get to those. It is obviously as you can see, it's quite tight. Uh your um axle sits in the way and then okay, you also have you also ha have the uh steering rack in the way as well. I mean big things it sits the uh front axle sits right in the way. If this is a two wheel drive I think not a problem, we wouldn't have any of this here. Be nice and easy, a lot more open, but not, not four wheel drive because most of the Delicas were four wheel drive. So, uh, it did make a two wheel drive, it had a 2.5 liter diesel, um, and this has got the 2.8 liter uh, 4M40. So, like I said, this is the same kind of setup that would be on a, on a uh, Shogun or uh, is a Challenger. I know I said. On a previous video, um, I call it Trident. It's not. It's a Challenger that had this very similar setup. I think the Challenger had 2.8 or the 2.5, you know. So, right. So that's what I get into there now. Obviously, it's going to be hard for me to do it with one hand. So two hands. So I'll uh, show you once you get that inspection cover off what we're dealing with. All right. So got it off. So let's get the camera up there and see. So as you can see there, there's a bolt, two bolts in that shot there. Those are the bolts you have to get out. Right, those go through the flywheel and into the torque converter. And you can kind of get a glimpse of the torque converter on the other side of the uh, flywheel there. So you need to take those out. When you take those two out, you need to rotate the engine over in the gearbox. And then there'll be probably a few more. I'm not sure. Look at that there. No, sometimes there's only four on some vehicles. This one here might be six. So, well, um, yeah, it's gonna get a ratchet up in there and a socket ratchet, and then just kind of crack them off. They're gonna be quite tight. There's a torque spec on them, so I do suggest looking them up. Uh, I'll try to find it before I uh, put this back together and then torque that back up. And then uh, once, once you get that out, and then the gearbox, everything, bell housing bolts, uh, the mount, the cradle, and everything, and obviously everything, linkage and hoses and wires and everything unhooked, and then you're good to go. But uh, this is a. This is where I'm going next with this. I need the torque converter bolts, and then I worry about the bell housing bolts and the um, and all the bits and bobs of the gearbox later on. So uh, let's get cracking on this one. All right, well, even though it's not been as long for you as it has been for me, because I'm going to put these videos together, but, um, so, yeah, last time I was on this, I obviously got the, um, flywheel unbolted from the torque converter, uh, got a few bits off, taken off, electrical stuff like that. Um, rear drive shaft's been taken off, front drive shaft's taken off. I need to get the, um, stator motor out. Battery's already unhooked. It's <coughs> dead anyways. And, uh, so I think that's the next project here. I see how Delica spiders been having their way on this thing, so... Nope. Oh, man, it's been like this for a while. Yeah, it's, uh... Starter motor is up in there. And, which is fun because the rear differential sits right below it. So that's going to be a... That's going to be a fun task. I've also misplaced my good, uh... Trouble 8, so I'm kind of using something else here. Which is more for... Uh, I got for under the bonnet, under the hood. But we're gonna use that here and we'll try it and we'll see how uh, how we get on. Hopefully I can get to that. So let's just uh, give it a minute here. Let me just jump in there. All right, what I'm gonna do first actually is I'm gonna take the uh, some of the other bits off of the gear rocks. Uh, a few sensors, some wires attached to it. Um, couple lines there <clears throat> and the shift linkage as well so we can get the camera on there I've got the uh, people are saying I need to get myself a stand so let's just stand to work properly there we are so this is shift linkage here there it goes from there it also bolts up to the side of the bell housing there so this little pin here pull this little guy out I'm just gonna get this off so should we go off? That guy there should come right out. 
in theory. There it is. A pin there. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It will come out. It's just a little bit corrosion on there. There it is. Okay, I'm going to stick that back in there. So, I'm going to stick the washer and, and the pin back through it. So that way, nothing gets lost. Except I don't want to do that. So. And we just have to undo the bracket, just up there. So let's uh, have a quick look and see. You see two bolts, it's on the belt housing. I also need to get, i do this dipstick tube. That, I think it's actually into the pan. So that's on there as well, that'll unbolted. And I'll have to, to see you eke that out. I think it's a two piece design. Let's hope so, because it goes way up there. So let's uh, hope so, or else. That's gonna be fun trying to pull your box out. So I think those about to be 14 or 15 mil. Let's go get it. Right, so it's 14. There's a hose up in there, which has caused me a little bit of grief. I had a wrench up there. Not impossible, just slightly annoying. It's actually it would be easier to put this on a ramp instead of on the ground, but I don't have that up at this moment, so this, this is a home project. Two bolts out. So it's freed up this so it's not attached to belt housing anymore. I don't take that out or anything, I just simply just need it now to kind of tuck out of the way for now until I go to install it again. All this for a stupid little seal which thinking back now. It's been leaking for a while but I've been ignoring it until one day it decided to go from leaking a little bit to leaking a whole lot. It seems what to run all the way up there. I only had to go up top which is going to be a massive pain to see what the dipstick tube is like. We'll deal with that in a minute. Let's do the stuff on the bottom here first. There's also another bolt right here. So it's in the bell housing. It looks about the same size, I reckon. It is.
Reverse click. <laughs> As Raymond Ray says, reverse click. That's the ground strap there, by the way. There's a line of strap right there. So, yeah, I need to make sure that goes back on. Be a long one too. Look at that, right? That goes into the bell housing. So it's oily as AF. Fun. Where does that go? Right. I think that's, um, I think that is. That actually is one of the starter bolts. I'll just start in with anything. The bell housing. By the looks of it. Yeah. I believe it is. So that's handy. I thought they're on the other side. In some vehicles, they are. They go on the starter motor side. This one appears to be going on the bell housing side. So that makes life a little more easier. I don't want to take the starter motor out per se. And uh, oh, there's, let's say hello to Salem. Hello, Salem. Hello. Just getting the cat skin. Boss, come and inspect my work. It's going to be a pain. I also don't want you to be in the way. A quiet area. There's a lot of noise going on around here. I can't communicate around that so much. That'll do. Let's, let's try to get it out of the way. And a bunch of lines and stuff. Here. The wiring. It's the sensors. Let's see if I can get a view here for you. Let's see, there's a sensor there. Needs to come out. One goes over top of there. So a hose or something attaches there. It's actually not in the sensor right there. That might be a speed sensor. Don't quote me on that, but that's going to come out. Unfortunately, not just plugged in there. That's not going to feel. It's all one unit. And it goes up into a harness, so now we can unplug it somewhere else. So it takes off. Up to the top of the bill housing and to the front of the engine. Stay on there. Alright. Like I said, if there's this little ramp, a little easier. Because you can get up in there a lot easier and adjust the ramp up and down. And this being on, on jack stands. Um, well, it's a good ab exercise, let's put it that way. Alright, got more over there. So, what I might do is I'm going to start. The back of the transfer case. I can get this a light. Where are we here? Let's see if I can get this guy here. So, the transfer case here as well. Let's see if you can see that. Oh, you can see that. So, I'll plug there. So, I'm done. That's for the part of the transfer case. And some mechanical transfer case on this. That would be a sensor. Plug for something was up this way. Another one there. Let's click the one done. Another one there. Oh, let's 
two more up here. How do you think about taping this? So I forget to have a videotape to watch. Yes, I have some welding to do too when it's an exhaust. So, um, it's in the project. I probably won't be able to keep that. I don't think welding, I'm not the greatest welder. I'm okay. It's better in a school when I learned it's there. But, uh, I'm good enough to get her done. Let's put it that way. Huh. And some shiny cooler lines need to come off as well. And there, one there, and there's one there. This is going to come off. I think I have tiny fluid out of the place, so I have to make sure get my drain pan for that one. Uh, looks like we have another ground strap here. So that will have to come off. Yeah, looks like there's a ground strap. Oh. And there's another sensor or something here. I don't think I'm lucky enough for it to be a plug. It feels like it's something that... Uh, goes to the harness as well. It's not even a plug further up. Uh, yeah, there's a bolt right there. There's a bolt right there. I can't see, can't see it. Can you? Turn the light on over here. There's a bolt right there for the sensor. The camera focus over here. So that guy's gonna come out as well. And anything else? Oh, there's one on top of here. Mm, where does that go? Off. You couldn't just make it, but it had just like a nice little main harness. You just unplug that, everything attached to the tranny comes out. Because no, it would be too easy. Alright, so part of doing this job is. Tracing stuff with your hands blindly. And I found that with a lot of four wheel drive vehicles, yeah, gearboxes and transfer cases, is you have to kind of picture stuff in your head that actually might just run. There's a harness right there. That's what this guy runs to. So I think I unplug. I might get lucky, and that just runs to that harness there. It stays attached to the gearbox. Chance for case, pardon me. Which, which is a pain in the arse, because it's right against that flip frame rail, you see right there. So you had to push down the button and pull. But ain't no freaking room to do that. I got it to click. Click, click, click and pull with fingertips. Everyone wonders why mechanics have strong hands. This is why garbage like stuff like this. All right. Hopefully, when we drop the gearbox down, we'll do it slowly and gently in case stuff is still attached. I've learned my lessons every time I take the stuff out like this. Do it gentle because you'll probably figure it out with something. There's another one over in here. I can see it. And another one. There needs to come off. And this. Fingertips again. Right. So that's the way I'm just done. There's another one over here. 
and how are you? So now they've decided to have a different. Different kind of plug. Well, that one. Speed mirrors for real. Not the camera, just the ice. Okay. And right there, I got the fuel tank. And I have a plug. It doesn't want to unplug. I just have to lift my neck up so head up so much. My neck is going to be so sore later on. I just have to in a big accident. I've done this before. I'll complain and complain. Alright. Just give us a minute here. Alright, so that one there was just a little clip. I'm going to put the clip. So it's got a clip like that in there. I had to pull out the pick. I had to call them, you know, some guys call all sorts. The other one called Jesus Clips. I call them Jesus Clips because you usually pull it off. It flies and you usually start cursing the Lord's name. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to stick it back in here because it should. When it goes on, those are actually beveled back a bit. It'll click on. But taking it out, obviously, it's like square on that side there. So uh, I need two hands for this. So let's do that now. All right, so up there, right here, was a bolt, which I have put right there, which was in there, and it just kind of holds it, all the bracket and everything together. It's straight, straight through that hole there. So I just took that off. I've kind of hung up around there. The little bracket has a little hooky part. And hopefully it stays there. So if not, uh, well, we'll find it. So now I just got a couple more bits here to do here, and then I got a hose here that's on there. It's down to this guy, and I have one on the other side I have to do as well. So I'll we'll, uh, socket and ratchet for that, and we'll get her done. I am happy to say one thing: I was wrong on this. This doesn't have to come out. It actually runs up and over, and there's actually a plug on the side. So I think that stays attached to the gearbox. Now the uh, our transmission if you're from the states or Canada. So I'm gonna take this clip off here. This little zip tie here. Is that? Does run up to the front. I think it's a, a breather. There's something down there. And I do think. Oh, magpie there. I'm gonna rob something. That is actually my cat. There. I'm gonna double check, but I think that actually doesn't come off. That was there. I think that takes off and it keeps going. It's past the gearbox. It's solid. So this one here, almost certain has to come off. So, so I get that out now. Alright folks, so let's see if we can get if we can see it. This line here it's a kind of hard, it's like a cable. Runs down inside the gearbox, right, and attaches. 
What that does is it kind of um, helps for the shifts of the um, the gearbox to the uh, to the fuel pump, and it kind of um, has to do with throttle position and stuff like that. Right? So um, yeah, you cannot take it out of here. It actually goes inside and hooks up to something inside the gearbox, which. Hard to see, pain in the ass, and I'm not sure how to get out of there, right? Because it's kind of a street down inside. So what we're going to do is we're not going to take that off there. Where this attaches, because it's obviously in 1994, but old school, doesn't have as many PCMs and electronics, it's a lot more mechanical, this vehicle. Um, yeah, this vehicle is something old L. A 94L400. I'm not sure about the facelifted ones because uh, they had this is going to be chemical fuel pump and they had a bit of the electronic fuel pump in the, uh, the updated ones after 96 or 97 around there. Oh. So they may have a different system than this. But this, that you can adjust that up there and it kind of controls your shifts uh, when you're and more for your kick down. So where you have to go is up into the I'm gonna go, it's I'm gonna go, it's up into the engine bay and I'll show you where it attaches. So it just gives me right here. Okay, so where it attaches, I have a light on it. It's actually unhooked already, but to find the cable. The cable's right there. And it attaches right in here. Oh. Yeah, it attaches right down in there, okay? And then this moves back and forth um, according to your throttle inputs. So I have to undo it there, and there, and then it runs straight down and straight back that way. So I'm trying to do this one from here. I'm going to undo it from here. I don't think there's much holding it on further back. Uh, cause I think I've already undone it. But I can get to that further underneath the more. Yeah, I don't see much more actually holding it on. It runs back there. So I'm going to undo that and have that just kind of hanging off. And when I put it back in, I'll just kind of feed it back in. Reach down if I have to. And uh, hook it up. Either I can put the vehicle back down on the ground when I'm done reach in because obviously it's a bit high up right now or I can get up on the stool or something and reach down in there and grab that. Um, now obviously I had to move the um, intercooler, had to be moved out of the way because that sits right here in the way. So I'll just undo that and it's kind of just, you know, they're all rubber lines anyways I have on this, I don't have any of the metal ones so I'll just kind of sneak them off to the side a little bit just to get enough access. Uh, I could do take the intercooler out if I want to. And do the wiring and all that for the uh, for the fans. Not a massive deal. I might even just do this fans anyways, just to allow for a bit more access. I only want a couple of plugs, so I've had this unit pull out a few times. I've done the turbo in this vehicle years ago. Um, I attempted to try to rebuild it, and then realized it was just no, it wasn't worth rebuilding, and replaced it. And there's a company that did half decent ones for fairly cheap. Like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't. It's not a high performance vehicle, so I'm not worried about high boost. I think most boost together is things like maybe, you know, what? I forget. Um, but when I did that. I put it on, and actually, it's, it was causing the pressure relief valve in the back of the intake to open up because it was boosting way too high. So I had to go to the old diaphragm and then I had to do a boost control. Um, because it's then it's under boosting. Uh, well, that was a bit more access, a bit more easier. Those wires all the way. So I'm gonna have to go in there to undo that bolt there and point at it for people that guy there. And then it should slide straight up out of that bracket and then it should go straight down. And I don't see really much else impeding it, as long as I feed it up the same way, which... So you got a nice little video here, let's see how it goes. 
and we should be golden. All right, so we'll do that. All right, as I thought with the dipstick, it's actually a two-piece. Um, there's the part there, and it slides just in up there. So when I ended up top, there's a 12 mil bolt on top of the valve cover. It holds the uh, other end. And as soon as you've undone that, because I've done, done this bracket already, it just pops straight out. And that's that. So that's, uh, that's easy peasy lemon squeezy, that one there. So we'll just kind of keep that guy. We'll get that kind of pulled up out of the way or pushed out of the way or something like that. I'll uh, worry about that in a bit. As long as I don't pin it when I put it back in, we'll be fine. So that part there can stay on top on the gearbox. Um, as for the the cable there, kick down cable. I don't believe what it's called. So the kick down. It um it's still kind of on there, so we'll uh we'll deal with that in a bit. I think it's held on further up by uh something else is holding it on there, but it's it's in the um, I think it's bolted in with the uh, in the bell housing, so well uh I think I could be wrong. I don't think I am. We are about ready to start unbolting the gear uh the mounts. So all I have to do is uh I say mounts, I mean the bell housing bolts. So do the bell housing bolts, there's a couple up top that apparently are right pain in the arse to get to. But we'll figure that out. Uh, what I might have to do is this is the uh, obviously the support for their gearbox the back. Uh, so you drop that down. Um, these are your normal jacking points here, but they're part of the support for the gearbox. So that's why I'm underneath the uh, the front subframe. So, so take, I gotta take those guys out, and I believe I have tried this once before because to do the Charlie uh, pan service on this. Uh, there's a couple of bolts behind here. This has come out, and one of these bolts is a bit of a pain in to get out. I may be seized in there a bit, but um, I think with the DeWalt now, we may be able to rattle that out. So we'll try. We, uh, I think, I can't remember which one it is, but one of them seized in there. I wasn't able to do that, so I did a drain and fell a couple times. But if I get it all out, I might. Um, I might look at doing the training service on it. I have the they can't have a new seal and new filter, so that might be something to do because I'm not sure how much gearbox. Is. Oh no! Before I take this out, I need to do those. I need to take off the uh, cooler lines. So I need to get drained because that will make a mess. Let's yeah. so do that. All right, so I get these uh, lines out here. I have some line wrenches. Hopefully, I have the right size. Seventeen. Right. They can go on in there. That's it. Fuck it underneath, and not take my light off. Handy, so I need to find my other work light. That one there is okay for one thing, but it's not for this. It's in the house somewhere. I forgot to charge it, and it's been misplaced. one. There's a bracket up there that's holding them on, so. Don't be like that. Uh, 
Oh no. Try not to finger his knuckles. <sighs> when you're pushing something like that, if anybody doesn't know, open your hand up. <laughs> Maybe you're pulling towards. So I was doing that. I looked. I wasn't grabbing like this, banging knuckles. Hold on like this and let it go and let the tool take the impact. This is a little trick. Tips and tricks I've learned through my many years of <clears throat> banging the living tar out of my hands and knuckles and cuts and bruises and thinking I broke something. Especially in this trade, your hands, take care of your hands. They are your most important tool. You know, despite what Snap on and Mac and Mac Co and Harbor Freight or whatever else he says. Hands you can't replace. Everything else is replaceable. I'm lucky if I only had one or two major incidences with my hands one to crush this thumb in the axle of a truck sometimes turn the wheel or using it to pull the half shafts out of a dodge three quarter ton and my thumb got caught between the u-joint and the uh and the axle tube and it went squish right down to the bone you know they took my end of my thumb off but luckily for me it didn't but there's lots of stitches and i was on light duty for a while was annoying enough as it was. A little bit of leakage out of here, which I knew we would have some, but fingers crossed that it's only the tiny bit I don't have to put too much in. The gearbox fluid in these, the Delica, is called Diaqueen um, or SP3. And I believe Halford sells something that's kind of compatible with it. That's the closest I could find, and it's done by, I think it's by Comma, it's the brand. Help with cells, and they're not, it's not the cheapest gearbox fluid. Not the most expensive, by any means, it's stretch of imagination, but it, you know, it took some research and looking around to figure out what I was after, and that was the closest I could find. So, anybody who's working on these, it has this gearbox, which is actually out of the Challenger SUV. If I'm not mistaken, um, it's on Matic. Obviously, no. Yeah, it's Die Queen. Is the Mitsubishi name for it? And I might have to get some to top this up. Depends how much I lose. But if I'm doing a service and doing anyways, you know, I still won't get all the um, gearbox fluid out. Even if I drop the pan and take the filter out and everything, there'll still be some gearbox. There'll still be some fluid up in the in the in the gearbox and in the clutches and stuff. Uh, nothing to do about that. But I've said I've flushed it a few times, so most likely I'll get it. You know, eighty to ninety percent of it will be fairly new fluid. So, right. So there's a bracket over there. Let's see if we can turn this towards it. And there. Bracket here that holds lines on, holds into the uh, the bell housing, as well as I had there's a bracket here which is attaches to your um exhaust downpipe, which that's not very tight because I've had that off a few times. So as I mentioned, I've replaced the turbo and I've also actually replaced. I replaced the downpipe because it actually had split. See those liners? This is a used one, but it actually had split. And it was, uh, it was no good. I decided to replace this with the used one because I couldn't find a new one because it won't make them anymore. So, pain nurse. And that might rust too. And if it does, well, then I'm getting the welder out and I'm welding it up. So. Because I'm not going to get another one because I'll probably just get the same thing again. But, oh yeah, I think my last one was the bracket that holds it was broken off. Okay. 
And as you can see, as as you can see before, it's broke off the flange anyway, so it needs welding. Anyway, and my last one was the same thing. Okay, so we'll get that off there with a ten mil. I'm just gonna use one of these guys. I guess a no ratchet would be better. Especially if I don't drop it in the bucket. Which luckily is not full of oil. I would like to try to do this and not drain it in case I don't do the tranny fluid service. I think my training service is going to come later anyway, so I'll have to support the uh, back of the gearbox to take the, uh, the support off. So. so if I keep this vehicle, which I don't seriously think I'm doing. Where the hell is my freaking ratchet? This is just bull oh crap. Hold on. Right, so got that out. I got a ratchet handle because that's just make my life easier. Uh, uh, there's some more there. Look at that. Huh? Oh, yeah, seeing it. Yeah. And that is why I have the pan, the pan to catch stuff. I knew we'd be getting some fluid out. Yeah, I guess we're having a shower tonight. I don't think I'm getting any better than this until I uh, get cleaned up. Then I get in the house. It doesn't smell too burnt or anything, it doesn't smell that bad. It does look a little bit icky, isn't it? Okay, well, it's a... There we are. That's what I wanted. Eek it out a little bit. Right. We just want them just kind of out of the way a little bit. I don't need a monster amount of room. So I'm only just pulling the gearbox straight out and dropping it down and then um, just get the room and seal. And this line, this cable here is actually just attached to a sensor on the other side of the gearbox. It just runs up and over. So I don't think I will need... Oh, there's another plug right there. Look at that. It's actually a, or a major one. It's like a, I think there is a control unit for the transmission on this vehicle. Rudimentary, and we can't plug into it in the UK because it's a Jap. It's OBD one. I say OBD one. It's Jap. It's Mitsubishi's own protocols before we went OBD two. So it's it's got a plug that looks like it could hook up. It does plug in to a regular uh, 16 pin, but I've tried it on either of the ones and they don't read anything. It doesn't even recognize it, so it was worth a shot. I've tried a few times. Expensive ones, cheap ones, you name it. <sighs> Alright, that plug will come up. But, oops. Stuck the hair in that line, but it's just gonna fight me a little bit. Oh. Sorry, I thought somebody was coming in my gate. I think I'm getting a training service done on this thing, anyways. I thought more would come out of these than out of the gearbox.
Eh, yeah, actually pretty good looks. Yeah, it was so far down. Gearbox fluid, that'd be great. Let's see. It's a bit difficult, but it's a bit fun. It's not playing nicely. A good high on it. Can there, but I can only jump at the same time. I think we get started. That's a good idea, so I double check. Yeah, you ready to do something? Just check over again, make sure you got everything. Like I said, I kind of didn't see this guy. I you know, I gotta get out, so I'm gonna pause this video because you see what I'm up to. Alright, folks, so we're just getting the uh, bell housing bolts out now. They're 14 mil, uh, just for anybody who's curious. Uh, the gearbox is finally kind of finished draining mostly, so uh, still a bit tight, but it's uh, it's kind of where we're at here now. I just uh, see the bell housing bolts out. I'm gonna at least try to get to this point here, um, and then we'll see how things go. I like to get it where. At least the point where I can start building it back up. I started getting too late here today. I got some other stuff to do today, so. It's deceiving with this ratchet, because ratchet is quite a big, long, heavy, half-inch ratchet. So, it makes you feel like there's a lot less tension on a bolt than actually is. Um, you know, I might do with this. It's because of rooms, and then go around, and then crack off all these bolts with this, the big old half-inch, and then go back around with the 3 8 because the 3 8 honestly, it's a lot more accessible. So we get it's probably um the best way, the best plan here. So I'm not 
much to see, so let's just skip forward here. All right, folks. Well, all bell housing bolts are out, except for I left one bottom one in just to kind of keep the bell housing and the, the block together. There's two up top there, and they are right pain to get off. Mainly because there's lack of access and two because they are stupidly tight. But I think I have them all off. We'll know more when I um, go to separate the box and the engine. When I have it on the stand. Then if I have to tweak things and stuff then I'll do that in a bit. But um, I need to still get that line there. The, uh, the, the cable. This guy here. So you need to pull that down from top a bit, so, and then I, um, it's going to take off. I'm going to put the jack underneath and then loosen these off a little bit with the impact. And then I'll get the jack underneath here, get it all strapped up around the gearbox. And, um, then we will see how my conversion works on my jack. So this is a very robust, uh, old pan by the way, so it should be fine. Um. And also you know, it'll balance. I have to have it kind of on there. It'll, it should balance. You know, I have to. I'm gonna leave this attached. Uh, if I can, just try to keep it all all together as one unit. So it comes out as one unit, it goes in as one unit. It's gonna be. We'll see. Uh, we'll see because that does go up quite a ways. It's quite a big uh, transfer case on there. So yeah, um, it's be she wasn't messing around. But we'll see. All right, so I think it's next day. Then kind of look and make sure you get the cable out first before I start pulling uh, this unit out. As you can see, the spiders have been having a lot of fun in my engine bay. So, which I kind of think it's a stupid place for a spider. It's not catching much bugs in there, but hey, I'm not a spider. What do I know? Right, so. I don't know what the issue is. Hopefully, I uh, don't have it in the bracket. <laughs> Here, let's try that. Problem solved. Let's just go underneath. Yeah, oh, nice, eh? No, I, I, I actually do hate working on my back. Uh, it's much better. I'll come right out. Uh, that was an issue. I'm a dumbass. All right. Uh, let's take that. Pull it down here. Just kind of let it hang a little bit. All right. So now we'll just uh, end them. 14 mil there for anybody who's interested. Let's set this down right here. And if the camera works still crap, I apologize. I'm not much of a cameraman. Let's go crack this off a bit. So I get them moving. Mainly. That's all I want. So I have them moving so not they'll uh, they break free before having a jack and stuff in the way. Just one, two. Oh, come on. That's on there. Three. And. You want to know what this is, by the way? Oh, you can't see it. Um, that is for the rear conditioning on this vehicle. Yeah, good place to put it, eh? Right. I feel like that's kind of moving there. Can't go wrong with the old DeWalt. I like it. All right, let's get the uh, jack underneath there, and we'll go from here. Alright folks, got the uh, trolley jack, floor jack, whatever you call it, with the adapter under the gearbox. 
They're all chained up. It's underneath like this way so I can wheel it back and forward. As I'm just doing the, not getting the gearbox out. Just getting it off out of the way. So um, I'm going to do these bolts here and I'll get her down. Well, folks, it does work. Got the gearbox out. I said, it's actually a rather decent sized freaking gearbox for a four cylinder 2.8 liter diesel. It's a heavy bastard, I tell you. Thinking back, I still might pull the freaking transfer case off and we have done it two separate. Might have been a smarter idea. It is quite heavy. But it's out, it's done. A couple things are hooked up. The dipstick too was a pain in the ass. But now it's gonna pull the uh, torque converter off and then get to the rear main seal. Well, and then the flywheel has come off. So yeah, I wish me luck. Hopefully I don't train the whole torque converter out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the next step there. And all I was able to get all the bolts and everything I did was uh, was fine. Just make sure things aren't catching and jamming up. And it's going to be fun to get that bastard back in. All right, folks. So back on to Delica here, Project Delica. The rear main seal. I'm just going to see. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on it. Just kind of got busy again. Uh, but my little trolley jack there. Uh, a little adaptation seems you're doing its job. I mean, it's held up. It's been sitting there for a while. Uh, it's not exactly a small gearbox on there, <laughs> as you can see. So, yeah, it seems to be working. It's got, uh, got her up, got her down. So we're going to be taking the rear main seal off. Uh, I'm going to get the flywheel off first, rear main seal off, uh, out, and then it's just all, once you get the back in, this building her back up. So let's get started here. So here we are. Gotta get the flywheel off now. Uh, yeah, she's quite uh, quite oily there. I think it's coming from the should be coming from the remaining seal. Pretty certain it is. Um, all that oil up top there was a valve cover seal, but it definitely was not coming from that. I'll, so I got the video when it was uh, leaking. I did feel behind it. It wasn't coming from there at all. So. Um, it was leaking, but it's, uh, I had replaced that before, so let's just see here, it's a 14.4, we get it off. Right, I need to go for the bigger 12, so we'll get her, get her done. I had a feeling that 14.4 had three spray, and it's just been quite enough, as you can see the DeWalt isn't. I don't have a problem with this. It's a bit bigger. <laughs> so, uh, Alright, let's get all these out and we'll get to the rear main seal. Alright, so just took the flywheel off. I literally, literally just took it off. And I'll show you something here. Like, diagnosis is 100% correct. Here's the rear main seal. Ah, and it was like this. So, was that leaking? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. That's it, friends. A rear main seal came off of my hand. And pull it out, no tools, nothing. I'll show you here. There you go. That beggar backed itself out. <laughs> yep, that's a. Uh, that was definitely the fault. It sits in there. And it literally, it was sitting like that, right behind that plate. It was just, so this thing was absolutely freaking just throwing it out. And as you can see from the video, it was, it was just freaking, it was pouring out the back. Uh, so luckily when it went, I was only about maybe a mile away, uh, just at the petrol station. Looked down, seeing that, topped up the oil, brought it straight home. It never ran low on oil, uh, below its mark. Um, just obviously it was just dumping on the back, so I'm gonna probably get this a bit of a wipe up. Hopefully my starter motor isn't too too oily and shit inside, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And I'll 
adapter plate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was my fault. That was a problem. So funny enough, though, this actually doesn't look too too bad. But you know what? I don't know how much it is leaking around here. There's no ridges or anything in that, so I'm not worried about it have eaten itself away. We'll get the uh, we get the new mains that we remain in. And uh, hopefully it's a nice tight fit. These are, you can buy these separate. The bolt comes off. It's just silicone on the back of the block. You can buy these separate with remain in it. So if I do find where I'm, I put the, the new seal in there and it feels like it's just freaking not fitting right, then maybe the seal has jammed up on here somehow and spun itself out. You can't, list, but you can buy these quite, they're not that expensive. And it just obviously bolts off, silicone around there, RTV, and call it good. So, uh, worst case scenario, I've got to replace this. I'm going to have to fork it on 20 pounds or so-ish. Best case scenario, my little, uh, the seal to come for it uh, that I have. Well, um, it'll work fine, so let's, uh, let's go. So, we'll adapt the plate on the top of there, there and uh, we'll get the remaining seal in. I'll call it good. So, this was a much more bigger project than I wanted as in it just took me for fucking sorry it took me forever to get it done um excuse the language if anybody's offended but yes it took a lot longer to get this done i should and anybody can comment this is you know it's not a long job blah 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 you're right it's not now i am on my back it's not on the left so it, i do find things take a lot longer i can't just run up to a toolbox you know i'm working out just uh stuff that I have, you know, that I don't have my big box that I can just run back and forth to a bench and a lift. So it is taking a lot longer than I would, it normally would in a shop, you know, it would take for me. But, um, <clears throat> as it breaks, also life gets in the way and I've got, you know, a lot of things that are going on. So, but, um, like I said, I've got the Land Rover, you've seen in other, other videos. So that's, I think that's partly why I haven't prioritized this vehicle as much as I should have. But I'm coming up to now um, where I'm actually going to need this again. So I think I've kind of I've had to kick myself into high gear and get it done. I have a couple more projects to do on this. Um, as well as I want to do a service and everything because the service was due when I had done it. Also need to set up glow plugs because they like to go after a few years. But they're only cheap, you know, 20 pounds for a set of four. And it's literally like a 15 minute job. So uh, I might do a video on that just for why not. Um, but on this vehicle here, it's quite, you know, they, it, it's not a high pressure diesel, so it needs the, I mean, you know, being an old, old vehicle, it does need the glow plugs, not like modern diesels where you'll see a lot will have the glow plug faults in them. I mean, in the UK where I live, uh, a lot of, um, vehicles don't actually require glow plugs, especially in the area I'm in. Um, maybe if you get to Northern Scotland, they might, but, um, yeah, with this one here, it definitely needs a glow plug to start up. If you don't give it, it's 30 seconds, then... It um it runs lumpy for about you know ten seconds or so and smokes a bit but if you let the glow plugs warm up it fires up on on the dime so it's quite you know it runs quite well this little engine for the fact she's twenty well, it's 2022 now so it's 1984 the math has took well over 25 years 26 27 years whatever old so yeah but yeah we'll uh we'll get that in there and then I might I might I might go further I might show some of the assembly but. I'm going to leave it at that. It's pretty much everything I've done, just in reverse order. Um, this video is going to be long enough as it is, so I'm going to try to keep it short. Um, and uh, hopefully I can maybe, I might put up with the vehicle running. If not, then I'm, I won't at this. So, um, well, I'll see what I'm going to do here. But it depends on how long this video is, as it is. All right, but um, I'm going to see you now. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click the like button if you like this. Comment down below if you want. Um, yeah, I know, you know, if you want to, a little bit of shade in there and see how long I've took and blah blah blah. I know, yeah, like I'll take it, but it is what it is. As I said, um, it's more of a project than it was actually having to get the vehicle in, get it done, get it back on the road. I probably could have, I should have, but I didn't. Uh, I did buy the Land Rover, and that's that served me well for it where it is. And we'll see what I'm gonna do from there, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. And um, if I don't put anything up after this, then uh. You know, don't forget to look at my other videos coming up, and we'll uh, see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.